respected. The young think that they have it all, and they all say this is the new life that we are in. And so all that kind of confusion. But the answer is there, but how can we reach and tap into the answer? Look at the church institution, no longer commands respect. Without money, people don't no longer respect the church. In, you all know that the churches are no longer respected and people want to do what they want to do, they want to go their own ways and think that they know it all. And we also see spiritual recklessness characterize the environment in which we live and the name Jesus Christ is rarely heard or mentioned. And you know, we preach against sin but you still see sin spreading and getting deep and complex and we wonder what is happening. I want to agree and submit to you that we are living at a time that the church really needs to rethink and Christians need to rethink. I find it difficult to know what to do and how to think and with who to be with and who to relate with. It's very hard. But the question is, what if I did not have faith in Jesus? What if I did not have faith in Jesus? With all com these complexities for burning our minds, and all these falling systems shifting, and we wonder whether we are the family, we are a people, we are a community, we are believers, all these things makes us have a question that who do you think you can relate to and what can you do? And if I did not have faith, how would I manage the life today? I don't like quoting people, but I like this theologian because some of these quotes or statements that he made are very relevant. But who has said this? The deceit, the lie of the devil consists of this, that he wishes to make man believe that he can live without the word of God. That is the lie of the devil. That in every generation that we experience and we see and the generation that is coming after us, and most of this generation we think that we can live without the word of God. And so Jesus, in the book of Luke chapter number 18, that we read, he talks of a parable of a persistent widow. And he begins by saying, man always ought to pray and not to lose heart. Man always ought to pray and not to lose heart. And at the end of the parable, Jesus asked a rhetoric question. He says, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? When the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? I believe we are living at the last moment of the time coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the last days to see what is happening in the world around us. We are living in the last days. But Jesus asked that question, and I want us to try to answer that question. Remember the first he said, all men ought to pray and do not faint, or without giving up. And then the last statement we need to really find faith. Now it has something to do with prayers. And why do we pray and how do you pray to God that you don't understand He does exist and that is the same yesterday, today and forever. God will never change, it doesn't matter. The civilization, it doesn't matter. The life, it doesn't matter. The society, it doesn't matter what is changing in the world. God is still the same. The Bible says it's the same yesterday, today and forever. All these things will come and go, but the word of God will live forever. Jesus made a statement and said that Mawa, Mawa shall remain. And so heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God 
shall never pass away. And so we can't live without. So Jesus asked this question. We really find faith when it comes. But I want us to dig deeper and then to understand the sources of faith. Number one, Jesus is the author of faith. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And so, when Jesus comes, we will find you and I still confessing the faith that we believe in Jesus Christ. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. Everything begins with him and ends with him. Why? Because we are justified by him. Romans 5 verse 1 to 5. Jesus is our justification. We are justified by him. Through Jesus Christ came justification of life. Justification that produces life that cannot be defeated by competing ideologies. That's what it is. So because through him we are justified of life and that means it produces real life. That means without Jesus there is no real life. Jesus is life. The word he spoke gives us life and hope. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 1 to 5. He said, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. He's talking about Jesus, verse 3. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation pro produces perseverance. Now he's talking about real life in Jesus Christ. He says, tribulation produces war, perseverance, and perseverance is character, character hope. Verse 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now remember that Pasadena gives hope. It produces hope. Are we hopeless or we still live in hope and with hope in Jesus Christ? He is our justifier. So the first source of our faith is Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. So when it comes, we will find the same faith. We will be confessing and praying and believing God for answers. This complexity of life is He able to give us the leadership and the wisdom and understanding by His Spirit so that we can confront challenges of life or we live a defeated life. We will really find faith when it comes. Number two, we must understand that faith is a gift of God's grace. It is a gift that is given to you and I. We do not deserve it. We can't earn it. We really that grace and faith propels and inspires and motivates us and grounds us in the faith knowing that Jesus has given us the gift of salvation by grace. And we can stand and say, Jesus who lives in me is greater than he who is in the world. Can I stand and say that Jesus is my Lord? That I'm saved by grace, not by my works. Look at Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8 and 9. He said, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of what, lest anyone should boast. The faith that we embrace, the faith that Jesus asked a question about. We really find people saying, I'm born again, spirit filled, forgiven, a child of God. To those who believe in Him, He gave them the power to be the children of God. Will he really find faith when he comes? Let's look at number three. Faith is the one of the Holy Spirit. That's a question he asks. Will he really find faith? Will he really find faith working? 
We live in a the work of the Holy Spirit working or the manipulation of man-made movement and move of the Holy Spirit. That's the question we need to ask. Faith is the work of the Holy Spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, 13 says, And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believe, therefore, spoke. We also believe, therefore, speak. We live in the fact people who can speak the word of faith and believe God for that miracle and receive miracle. Or try to manipulate the workings of the Holy Spirit as opposed to allowing faith to activate the miracle and for me to be the recipient of the miracle. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And faith without action is dead. And the Bible says that it is by faith of the Holy Spirit that we move and that we can confess and believe God for miracle. If you believe God for your healing, you have to speak it. You have to believe that by His tribe, I'm here. That by His tribe, you are here. It is by faith, it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Will He really find men and women in the church who can believe the word, confess the word, and allow the Holy Spirit to do a faith work in them? To believe God for what He says and speak. And as they speak, they see the result and they speak with authority and with the power, believing that God watches over His word. Amen. We really find faith. We really find faith. Source of faith number four faith is your responsibility. It is your responsibility. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12, and verse number 9. Look at verse 12. It says, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief departing from the living God. That's one that beware that any of you should depart from the living God. And verse 19 says, So we see that we could not enter in because of unbelief. Why? Because of their rebellion. The moment you don't believe the word of God, that is rebellion. You have rebelled against God. You don't believe what God is saying. It is your responsibility. Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God, <clears throat> must believe that he is and that is a reward of those who diligently seek him. We really find faith when he comes. We really find you and I that when we converge to, together in a sanctuary to worship God, we worship God by faith. We sing praises to him by faith. We confess the word from the spirit of God. Or it is just a social occurrence or a social activity. Church should not be a social activity. The church should be a church on fire. The church where God speaks. The church where the spirit of God moves. The church where people see the move of God. You come to God, you believe that He is. And whatever is eating on the inside, you come and present yourself before the King of Kings and He's going to meet your need. We really find men and women who come before Him, believing that He is and is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. When you go before Him, do you have something to believe God for? Is there something on the inside that is too heavy that you want to pour it? before him and say, Lord, I need your help. Do you have something? Or you, you have it all? Let me tell you, there is no time that you'll have it all. 
there comes a time that everything else will fail, but you need God. Yes. There is no way that you can do and make it without God. We, this generation has experience. The other day we had this pandemic is still causing uncertainty and fear and anxiety. Science did give us the result within a week. Money did stop it from spreading. Where are we turn to? So when everything else fails, the word of God stands. Amen. The word of God will never fail. That's why when you come before him, you must believe that he is and is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. May he continue to reward, to reward you as you seek him. Amen. Will he really find faith when he comes? Will he find people who are worshipping him in spirit and in truth? Or playing church? Those four important sources of faith are very important. I want you to think about it and meditate on them. Now that God is expecting and looking to you to be the light of the world. What does faith do? Faith will always propel you beyond your five senses. That's why it is important to live by faith, not by sight. Because it propels you beyond the five senses. They'll see, hear, and taste, and smell, and touch it. You become supernatural. Man and woman, when you live by faith, because God wants you to please Him. The Bible says, without faith, we cannot please Him. And so what does faith do? It propels you beyond your five senses. Now I want also to look at these two words that are very important. Faith gives you confidence. And it makes you be certain. Faith makes you righteous. Without faith, you cannot please. We you really find faith, you need faith to face life challenges confidently. Knowing that God is with you. Knowing that you are victorious in all things. You are not a victim of circumstances. Amen. Knowing that what man cannot do, your God can do it. Amen. And God can only work through you to do what he wants to do. Amen. And so you must know whom you believe. Think about Noah in the book of Genesis. But it's also recorded in Hebrews chapter number 11 verse 7. By faith, the Bible says, Noah, divinely one of things not yet seen, moved with a bodily fear, prepared an ark of the saving of his household, by which he con condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Now let's stop there. God told Noah that it's not going to rain. And when you read your Bible, well, you realize that it had not rained. Because God spoke and everything came into me. Now we need the rain. But before Noah made the act, there was no rain. And so God talking to him and telling him, it's going to rain. He took faith for Noah to step out and start making that act. He believed God. And now we are reading about Noah as a man of faith. May people read about you because you are a man or a woman of faith. Amen. You really find faith when it comes. So Noah was divinely instructed by God to confirm concerning the coming of the flood. The things not yet seen implies more than just announcement that preceded the flood. I believe in rejection and mockery. Everything he went through. People did not believe. People were mocking him. And for many, 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 many days and months. And years people were saying, where is the flood, Noah? You keep on making and building the ark. That was a mockery. Let them mock us. But one day, they will know that the word of God stands forever. Amen. Amen. And it will never lose its power. Why? Amen. Because God watches over his word to bring it to pass. Amen. I better be mocked because I know Jesus. Yes. I believe in him. That I believe in the healing power. I believe in deliverance. Amen. I believe in miracles. I believe in God. Amen. I'm not going 
we have to take in and believe. I believe in God. Amen. I know that He's saved. Yes. I know that nothing else will take Him away from me. Amen. I believe that one day He's coming to take me home. Amen. I believe in Jesus. I believe in prayer. I believe in the healing of the prayer. Amen. I believe in laying on hands yes. to the sick and the recover. Amen. I believe in casting out demons. Amen. Let them mock me. Let them mock you. But be as normal, you're going to make a history. Amen. Amen. When you look, look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, Before any plant of the field was in the earth, before any half of the field had grown for the Lord, had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. That means no man, there is a probability that he never saw the rain. Now listen to me. When God has spoken to you, believe it. Because there are good things that the eye has not seen, the ears have not heard, neither has entered the heart of man what God has prepared for his people. You have seen nothing yet. Just believe God for what he says. Believe God for a miracle. Believe God for a supernatural move of God. I believe God for revival. I believe God for the remnants. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so you need to examine yourself as an individual. Do I really have faith? When I go to church, do I really have faith? When I lift my hands and pray, when I kneel down, when the scripture is read, do I really believe that's the word of God? Jesus asked that question. But you know what? You and I have the answer. And so when Jesus comes, he will answer that question, yes. I found faith on John. I found faith on Anna. I found Amen. faith in George. I found Amen. faith in Isaac. Amen. You have the answer. Amen. You are the answer. Amen. Live by faith. Amen. When he comes, he should fight you. Amen. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. Thank you that you watch over your word. May you speak to every listener today. And if there is anyone who does not know Jesus as Lord, I want you to say this prayer, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. And from today, help me to live and walk by faith. For I believe, therefore I confess. Thank you for making me be your child in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now if you pray that prayer, know that you're born again. Live by faith. The Lord bless you. I look forward to meet you and to come into your comfort homes during our next broadcast. God bless you so much. Amen. Amen.